Hello there and welcome back to Steam with Steve. Today we're going to keep going with our coding bad experience and we're going to go to the next one in the Python series and do list number one. So let's just get straight into it. So we come down here, go to Python, we click on list one and we're going to have a go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, sorry, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve options to do. Cool. So we've got 12 things starting with first, last six, and then all the way down to has 23. So we click on this guy and here we go. Given an array of ints, return true if six appears as either the first or the last element in the array. The array will be of length one or more. Um, so there's a there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, some people will teach you to do if statements with checking if this is true or false. So it's the, is this thing in here true? Right, so is this thing true? And then it will say, yes, it's true. Return true. Else, return false. All right, now, do you see that there's a problem there? You're literally seeing, checking to see that if this is true or false, and if it's true, return true. If it's false, return false. So instead of doing that, why don't we just see if we do this? If we return if this thing is true. And we question it. If it is true, it will just return it. If it's false, it will return that as well. So that's when we're doing Boolean logic. The trick with that is to try and think like that. So if it's the first or the last. So we're just going to return. And we're going to go, what's the nums? So we're going to go nums at zero is equal to six. Or nums at the end of it so we'll do let's try this we'll go length of nums equals six and we length the number minus one because it needs to shift back one in oh just for the lulls i just want to see if this works don't think it will though Oh, it did. Yeah. Okay. So you can also do, um, like what we did with arrays is you can literally go one back, right? So all I did there was if nums at zero is equal to six, all good. Wasn't even thinking. And then if we did nums at negative one equals six as well. So that would literally go from the end of the array. So if I wanted to go one, two back in and do that, that won't work. Right? Cause sometimes the arrays won't be that big. Oh, next one. Here we go. Same first as last. So given an array of ints, return true if the array is length of one or more and the first element of the last element are equal. So we're going to return. Let's just do this. Nums at zero. So at the very beginning is equal to nums at the end, negative one. That should make sense. Cool. So that it must be return true if the array is length one or more. So we'll go length of nums minus one. See what happens there. So it must be the length of it is mucking around with it. Um, here we go just so that we can see what the outputs are getting. So we'll just return true. Yeah, cool. So they've done empty, they've done seven, etc. So we want, okay, what we're going to do, we'll error check this. So we're going to go if the length of nums equals zero, you don't have anything to swap around, right? So then we return false. Otherwise we will return what we did over here. We can get rid of that. Yeah, cool. So see how um, we looked at the, the inputs and outputs and we saw this guy here, that was the red flag for me so that it was checking to see if the length was zero 
it should just return false straight away. So all we've done is we've done that, which error handles, and then allows us to see that the first and the last is equal to the same thing. Cool, make pi, return an integer array, length three containing three to pi, to first digits of pi, right? This is just a real simple one. So we just literally go return three comma one comma four, square brackets. Cool, only one input, one output. Next one, common end, given two arrays of integers A and B, return true if they have the same first element or they have the same last element. Both arrays will be length one or more. Um, we could do this all in one statement, but I'm actually going to do this as a separate thing. So we're going to go check equals true. Actually, no, we won't do it that way. What we'll do is we'll do a couple of statements. So if a at zero is equal to B at zero, snaky byte, we're going to return true. Then if a at the end, so negative one, is equal to b at negative one, thank you by it. Return true. Else at the end, we return false. Cool, that worked. Another way that we could do, because we know that this is equal to that, and or if this is equal to that, it's equal to true. So what we could do is actually just take that bit there and put it in there. So we could just literally go or a negative one is equal to B at negative one is equal to true. And that will work as well. Okay. So that, that's another way of doing this just in case um, that is a more elegant way because what happens there is it checks to see um, if it's true or false in one statement rather than having multiple. Cool, next one, sum three. Given an array of int length three, return the sum of all the elements. Well, that's pretty easy. We'll just literally go A at zero plus A at one plus A at two. I'll put a little spacey there. Oh, nums, sorry. <laughs> sorry, bad habit. So their array is called nums. So we'll go return nums at zero plus nums at one plus nums at two. There we go. Worked. Awesome. Next one. Given an array of int length three, return an array with the elements rotated left. So one, two, three yields two, three, one. So we're going to rotate these around. So we're going to return nums. So the middle, so the first position becomes the zeroth position. The end, so the second position becomes the first position. And then the last position becomes the third, um, the second position. So zero becomes, um, let's go again. So zero becomes the end. So zero gets shifted across the end there. The first position shifts across one. The third, the second position here gets shifted into the first position. And then that last position was the zeroth position. So when we return this, we want to return nums at one plus nums at two plus nums at zero. So then that will rotate those all around to match what we want it to do. Oh, not plus, sorry. Comma. So we actually want to make this a new array. And we just put the elements in their position with commas separating them. Sorry, not adding them. We're swapping and creating a new list. Cool. Next one. Given an array of int length three, return a new array with the elements in reverse order. So one, two, three becomes three, two, one. So we're going to go return and do exactly the same thing we did before. So square brackets, nums, but in this case, what was at the end becomes the beginning. So we'd go nums at two, comma, nums at one stays in the same position, and then nums at zero goes at the end. So then we'll go, go. Cool, gold star, that all worked. Then max n three. So given an array of int length three, 
crew gap, which is the largest, the first or the last element in the array, and then set all the other elements in the value to be the same. So we want to work out which, which one's the max, because we want to work out which is the largest, the first or the last. Um, we can actually use the Python build in max function. So we'll go max, um, we'll go output equals max. And then we'll go open bracket nums square bracket at zero. So whatever was in the first position or nums square bracket um, two, right? Or we're at the end. Um, and then that will work out which one's the biggest out of those two. And then we just return that. So then we'll literally go return square bracket output comma output comma output close the square bracket and go easy another way if you don't like um this way uh, you could also make this a bit more expandable so you could go from the end so if we do minus one that is actually probably gives you a bit more expandability so instead of being three length doesn't matter how big this array or list is it would still then work all right the other way that we could also do is do that in an if statement. So if nums at zero is greater than nums uh, at negative one, snaky byte, and then I would have um, output equals zero just as a temporary placeholder. And then we go output equals, so if that's the largest, then you would just literally go nums at zero. Else, snaky byte output equals nums at negative one. So that would work exactly the same. Just now, the reason why I do that personally is so that I know that this variable is what I'm going to be comparing. Um, you don't think this would work. Oh, it does. Okay. Some programming languages that won't work because because um, you needed to define the variable first before you use it, basically. Okay, but Python looks a little bit more friendly, so it's able to work that way as well. Um, good habits are, though, to do it that way, particularly if you go to other languages later down the track. Okay, sum two. Given an array of ints, return some of the first elements in the array. If the array length is less than two, just sum up the elements that exist. Return zero if the array length is zero. All right, so straight away it's told us the exception. So if the length of nums equals zero, snaky byte, we just return our zero. So if the array of length returns the sum of the first two elements in the array, if the array is less than um, two, then just add the sums that already exist, sum up the elements that exist, return that. So we can then go return. Let's just do the front and the end. So let's just use the code that we've done before. So if we go nums at zero, plus nums at negative one. Now what that should do, if it, even if it's got one element, that should work. No, it doesn't. Okay, so given an array of ints length, return the sum of the first two elements in the array. Oh, sorry, first two elements. It meant first and the last. So that didn't work because it's got that. So then if the length of nums is equal to one, Snaky byte. If the array length is less than two, just sum up the elements that exist. So if it's the length of its one, when we just return nums at zero. Yeah, cool. So what we've done is a little bit of error handling there. So we've checked to see if its length is zero, it would return zero. If the length is equal to one, just returns um, zero. Otherwise, return nums at zero plus nums at one. Excellent. Next one, midway. So given two integer arrays, A and B, exact length of three, return a new array length two containing their middle elements. Okay. So we're going to go return new array. So we're going to have two square brackets. And inside this, we're going to have the middle elements. So 
So, oh, and they link three. So why don't we just bully it? So we'll just literally go A at one, comma, B at one. Cool. So that's literally found the midway of a three element one. Um, if you wanted to get a little fancy, what you could have done is you could have gone length of A divided by two. And then over here, you could have done length of B divided by two. Because then that would work to, no matter how big the, the array was. So even if it was four, that would still work. Um, that would actually break it. It was even number, uh, sorry, odd numbers. So if it was five, it would then work out what the middle way is. Makes n, so given an int array of ints, return a new array length two containing the first and last elements from the original array. The original array will be at least be one or more. So given an array length, return a new array containing the two of length two containing the first and last of the original array. So we've got that. We're literally going to return, put square brackets, and then inside that, we're going to go nums at zero comma, and then the last one. So then we would go nums, negative one. Awesome. So basically that takes the first element and then nums negative one would give you the last element. As 23, so given an int array length two, return true if it contains a two or three. Okay. <laughs> right. So if nums at zero let's do uh, yeah we'll do this in one go we'll no we'll do them separately and then you can work out which way you prefer so if we go nums at zero is equal to two or nums one equals two Actually, yeah, no, we'll do it all in one go. So if nums at zero is equal to two, or nums at one is equal to two, or nums at zero is equal to three, or nums at one is equal to three. Then we go snaky byte, and then we return true, else return false. So if any of those is equal to two at zero or one, it's true. Or if it equals three, it's true. Now, there's a better way. Do you see how we've gone to the old bad habit? We could do this all in one line because this is checking the truth of something. So we just literally just go return that. And that will work as well. So if we go that, and then we've got the snaky bite at the end. Do you see that this evaluates to be true or false? So if it is true, just return true. If it's false, just return the false. And that's it. Cool. So hopefully you've picked something up um, from our little list experiment. Um, if you have, please like and subscribe down below because that does help with our YouTube algorithm. And yeah, see you next time on Steam with Steve. Adios.